Hello Husky fans, welcome back to an all new year of UC Sports. New look, same show, we are back. I'm Alexandria Palmer and alongside me is my co-host Ryan Kim. We have a show packed full of UConn sports. That's right Alex, though we may have an all new setup for you, some things just never changed. We have men's and women's basketball in crunch time, heading quickly towards tournament month. Can men's and women's hockey hit their stride and salvage the season? And a congratulations to a UConn football alumni later on. What do you say? Let's get this started. UC Sports starts right now. women's hockey team hosted an exciting game on Friday against number three Northeastern. In the first period, Catherine Crawley stole the puck and got one in the back of the net for the home Huskies. UConn had a one goal lead for the first and second period. But this didn't stop Northeastern. They came out firing in the third period and tied the game to bring it into overtime. Northeastern was able to win this match 2-1 to one in overtime, coming from behind majority of the game. Now for the men's side of the puck. The UConn men's hockey team hasn't been having the best luck lately. They are on a six game losing streak and 12 game losing streak for Hockey East play. Let's hope they can find their rhythm as this season is almost over. I was able to attend their latest game against Boston College and have the report for you. It was hockey night here in Hartford as the UConn men's hockey team took on Boston College. The Huskies were hoping to break their five game losing streak. UConn knew it was going to be a tough game with lots of talented BC players, especially goaltender Joseph Wall. The Huskies accumulated three penalties in the first period, but they held the Eagles from scoring any power play goal. Before the end of the first, BC was able to put one in. Boston College took advantage of the penalties and kept scoring. Ruslan Ishkahab finds the back of the net for the Huskies and cuts the lead 2-1. to one. It was his first goal in 14 games. BC was on a roll leading 4-1 to one at the end of the second. It was a very physical matchup and the energy in the arena was electrifying. Coming into the third and final period, the Huskies came out strong. Coach Kavanaugh decided to switch the goaltenders and put Tomasz Vomashka between the bars. Yeah, I, you know, just thought the team needed a switch there. So, and I thought Tomas did a great job coming into the third period. The Huskies came out firing. Ruslan scores once again to get the momentum going. The game was very fast paced and back and forth between the teams. Wyatt Newpower capitalized on the five on three and had a beautiful goal to bring them within one. With a little over two minutes left, Vomashka is pulled for an extra man up front. BC was able to score an empty net goal and ended the game winning five to three. There are only nine hockey games left, including their next one against Northeastern on Thursday. From the XL Center for UCTV Sports, I'm Alexandria Palmer. Welcome back to UC Sports. UConn women's basketball looked to be on a roll, cruising past Notre Dame and overcoming strong Oklahoma and Cal teams on the road. The preseason questions of lack of depth and a stalling offense was apparent in the 68-57 loss at Baylor, the first UConn women's regular season loss in 126 games. After steamrolling seven American Conference opponents, the roadblock that was Louisville came on Thursday, who again shocked UConn Nation. The Cardinals dished a second loss to UConn, a first since 2013. Behind Asia Durr's strong finish and Louisville's suffocating defense. With the latest loss, UConn fell to fifth in today's top 25 AP poll, their lowest ranking in 12 years. Not all is lost in the struggle though, as a 10-point victory over Cincinnati continues the Huskies' streak 
of 946 games without consecutive losses, and they have yet to lose to an American Athletic Conference foe. During this span, senior Nafisa Collier reached two milestones, 2,000 points and grabbing 1,000 rebounds. Congratulations, Nafisa. Now joining me is our women's basketball analyst, Noam Watt. Thanks for coming tonight. Thanks for having me. Now let's start with this. I want to know, is the number five ranking that they earned today warranted, or is it too high or too low? What are your thoughts? I think it's definitely warranted. This team is clearly struggling on the road, and they need a chip on their shoulder. I think this team will ultimately finish as a number one seed in the tournament, but for now, a number five seed is accurate. I don't think Notre Dame should be ahead of us, given UConn beat them easily on the road, but these rankings aren't final, and Gino is most likely happy that they are a lower seed, for it gives them a little motivation. Nevertheless, this, like you said, is the Huskies' lowest rankings, lowest ranking in 12 years since February 2007. It's been a remarkable run, and it's not over yet. Yeah, and despite not having lost to a conference opponent, the two-loss season is, is clearly not something we're accustomed to here in stores, but what's going on with this team? Well, first of all, that's right. This two-loss season, something we're not accustomed to. First time since the 2012-2013 season that they've lost more than once, which, if you think about it, is remarkable. And that year, they won it all. But this year, they lack depth. Nobody from the bench plays an important role in this team, and it's showing right now. In their last four games, the bench has scored two points against Cincinnati, two points against Louisville, 13 against UCF in a game that they absolutely destroyed UCF, and five against SMU. That's not a winning recipe. And what do they need to do to get out of this slump? In terms of getting out of this slump, Katie Lou Samuelson needs to heat up. She's shooting just 35.7% from deep this year, way down from her astounding 47.5% from last year. She's also shooting just 23.4% from deep in her last seven games. Additionally, Kristen Williams needs to break through. She's clearly run into the freshman wall, scoring just 13 points over her last three games. 13 points combined. And she's averaging just four points over her last seven games. She put up 28 in that game at Notre Dame. She has, she has it in her to succeed. She just has to dig deep and find it. It doesn't look like they're going to get much from the bench, though, so the starters need to step up. I know there's been at least some predictability to the, comp to the losses that they have, and Gino even said after Louisville that we kind of sucked this year, to be honest with you, and we need to get better. Do you see UConn losing for what would be, in their terms, an unprecedented third time this year? No way. I think UConn runs the table. Their toughest remaining game is their only non-conference remaining test, which is Monday against South Carolina. The Gamecocks have quietly risen to 12th in the rankings, but that game is at home, which the Baylor game and the Louisville game were not. UConn will certainly go undefeated in the American Conference, again having never lost in this conference. But Coach Oriyama loves these non-conference tests, as we've seen with Baylor, with Notre Dame, and with Louisville. This one at home against South Carolina, the Huskies will win. I think the Huskies will finish the regular season 28-2, and, and ultimately, like I said, will finish as a number one seed, despite right now being a projected as a number two. This stretch will test the Huskies, but they will come through. Thank you, Noah. The Huskies will take on Temple on Saturday at Gamble Pavilion before a tough task in Hartford. We'll have to see if their last non-conference battle against South Carolina plays out like Notre Dame or like Louisville. We've got to send it to a commercial break, but stay tuned. Alex will be back with the men's basketball on the other side. It's been an exciting season under new head coach Dan Hurley for the UConn men's basketball team. They recently traveled to sunny UCF but came up just short. Jalen Adams had a game high of 27 points. With 58 seconds left, the Huskies made it a two-possession game, but they couldn't tie the game and UCF made nine free throws to close out the game. The Huskies returned home where they hosted East Carolina in another American Athletic Conference matchup. Josh Carlton was the star of the game where he had his career high of 20 points and 16 boards. UConn had other players in double figures, Christian Vital, Tyler Polly, Sidney Wilson, and Taryn Smith. The Huskies outscored ECU 18 points in the second half to capture the win 76-52. They now improved to 13-9 overall and 4-5 in the American. 
Now alongside me, I have Hezekiah Johnson, who has been following the men's basketball team and traveled down to UCF to report the game. Has the Huskies really struggled in the first half of the UCF game. What do you think was the cause of that struggle? They really needed Altery Gilbert. Gilbert is really the glue that sticks this team together. Him not being on the floor left the Huskies without their floor general. Adams is an okay passer, but he isn't a floor general. He's a scoring guard. His game is being crafty and getting to the rim. That was very hard for him to do when UCF has a building in 7-6 Taco Fall. He shot one for eight from the field in the first half. And also the team had 10 turnovers, but he had four of them himself. Now coming off that loss, they dismantled East Carolina oh, yes. completely and had an unlikely superstar, Josh Carlton, who had an amazing game. What do you think was the key to that victory? Josh Carlton was amazing. He posted 20 points and 16 rebounds. He was making his dominance felt early in the paint. This is exactly what I like to see, and this is what we need to see more of. We really haven't seen his full potential last year under Kevin Ollie. He only averaged 4.4 points per game and 3.7 rebounds. He is now averaging 8.1 points and about 5.5 rebounds per game. If he can put up these consistent numbers, he can easily be an asset to the Huskies come tournament time. He's still growing and is only a sophomore, but junior Christian Vitel was the key to this win too. He posted 18 points, seven, seven rebounds, and seven assists. He is the guard that can do it all, and it's astounding that he has the most rebounds on the team in 5.7. Wow. Looking at where the Huskies are in the American Athletic Conference, they stand at 13-9 and nine overall, but 4-5 and five in the conference. What do they have to do to finish this stretch out strong in, for the AAC tournament? They just have to tighten up the loose screws. They have to limit turnovers to the opposition, and they, and, or they're not going to win. Hurley always talks about if they can limit their turnovers to under 10, they'll be in a good shape. Jalen Adams needs to tap into a different mindset mentally. He cannot follow the games, and he cannot not show up. Last game against East Carolina, he didn't play the last 18 minutes. I don't know why he was benched. We're going to find out soon. <laughs> <laughs> but going forward, they played two ranked opponents in Houston and Cincinnati at 25. So the whole team needs to be locked in and ready in order to win. The Huskies will hit the road in a different AAC matchup, this time against Temple. The game will take place Wednesday, February 6th at 6 p.m. Thanks so much for coming, Hezekiah. Thank you for having me. A big congratulations to former UConn football safety, O.V. Melly Fonwu. He can now call himself a Super Bowl champion after the New England Patriots defeated the Los Angeles Rams 13-3 in Super Bowl 53 last night. Melly Fonmu was inactive for the big game, but is still walking away a champion. Charlotte Hornets guard Kemba Walker was selected as an NBA All-Star for the third time in his career. Walker is averaging 24.6 points per game, 5.6 assists per game, and shooting 36% behind the arc. He will be a starter on either Team LeBron or Team Giannis, with a draft coming on Thursday. Well, that'll do it for this week's edition of UC Sports. Be sure to follow us on social media at UCTV Sports and subscribe to our YouTube channel at UCTV Channel 14 to keep up to date on all things UConn Athletics. For Ryan Kim and the rest of the crew, here I'm Alexandria Palmer. Have a great week and make sure to join us next week for another UCTV Sports broadcast. Good night and go Huskies!